What's up YouTube, we're back with another video, the GBDH1000, the third video of the series. And today we're going to discuss, in particular, the heart monitor on this piece. Now, this is what we've all been waiting for in terms of this technology. It's the first of its kind with the G-Shock um, series, the G-Shock Heart Monitor. And you can see here, it's got a nice little um, light there that shines in green. This light gets shined on your wrist through your capillaries. Um, and then some of it is absorbed and some of it's not. And then it's reflected back into the sensor that detects if there's um, it turns that into a pulse in theory. This watch is pretty cool because um, all the windows have the um, heart graph on there. Let me show you. So, notification. <laughs> We're not talking about notifications today, so stop it. We'll get to that in the next video. So, click on mode. You'll see that here is your heart rate monitor window. Of course, that one's going to display your heart rate right there, which is not accurate because I don't have the watch on. Here's your workout mode, that window down there, you can see the heart rate monitor again. Next window, stopwatch, yet again. That's the beauty about this watch. You get heart information on every window you desire, even compass. Here's your compass, altimeter, thermometer, and there's your heart rate yet again. Beautiful. Then we go back to the home window, notification page as you saw there, little tease. Back to your home window, you click on the display option here, and you could change instead of showing the world time, you could short one, you could show different options there in your screen, including heart rate. And there you have it. So when you wear the watch, you have the option to display that information as you do whatever activities you're doing, um, which is pretty neat because you can always monitor your heart and keep uh, track of your activity as you um, do day-to-day -day activities. So Maybe you're going for a run and you want to see if you're um, maxing out your heart rate. Um, if not, you can push the pace and get that heart rate going, fa heart rate going faster to improve your uh, workout. Or maybe you're doing too much, you're being too active and you need to calm down. That would tell you, like, slow down, take a breathe, take a chill pill, relax, watch some TV, take a little, little nap or something, and get that heart rate down a little bit um, to meet your medical needs as whatever, you, whatever your needs are. Um, now here you can also see there's a graph option. If you click on the run button, then press the D button. Okay. You get into this window here that shows, um, your run information. Here in this window, you have this cool little, um, display. On the display, you have target information on heart rate, right? You have your current heart rate. Then you can set what you want your target rate to be. For example, here it's showing that one it's to stay between 91 and 109 heartbeats per minute, right? <clears throat> if your heart rate drops below that target rate or above that target rate, the watch will give you a little beep signal indicating and a vibration indicating that you're above or below that target rate. So if you want to get aggressive and you want to start working out really, really aggressively and you want to get that heart rate really high, you can set the target high and the, the watch will tell you, beep, beep, you know, you're not within target, speed it up, let's go, get more active, which is pretty neat. It's kind of, and yet another notification. Leave me alone. Get, you, get your heart going within a parameter and that'll motivate you to kind of either get healthier or uh, be more aggressive, burn more calories and so forth. So this is pretty neat. You also have a, on the top here, you'll have a display that tells you a range, where you are within that range on the top here. Current heart rate, your time, um, and then of course your target, like I was just telling you shortly. Okay. Okay, let me exit this window here. So today what we're going to do is we're going to test the heart monitor to see how accurate it is. We do have an Apple iWatch Series 4 which I've seen reviews on, which people have um, said that are very accurate. So I'm gonna do a comparison between the iWatch Series 4 to see how it, how it compares to that watch. 
um, in terms of heartbeats. Now, we're going to do some resting comparisons. And we're going to do some active comparisons to see how the watch fares up um, um, to that to the I Apple iWatch Series 4 and see if um, it captures any information that the iWatch doesn't. Now, to be told, there's two big differences between those watches, this one and the Apple Watch. One, this watch is meant to be used in extreme um, activities, right? This this is the reason about G-Shocks that they um, stand out amongst all other watch companies because they're meant to be abused. They're, um, you can wear it on rugged conditions. You can go skydiving, running, uh, dirt biking, whatever you want to do. This watch will tolerate that. Now, watches, I watch example, the Apple watches, you got to be more careful. Those watches can break much easier than, I suppose, this watch uh, in comparison. So we, that's one big comparison there. The second one is that the Apple Watch is a smart watch in fully. So you have a lot more applications that you can use with that watch instead of the um, G-Shock, um, I don't know what you want to call it, the, the you know standalone uh, G-Shock application, which shows you some information, which um, I'll, I'll show you what I'm talking about shortly. It's not as robust as all the Apple Watch um, secondary applications out there. Maybe in the future, G-Shock will open up their um, watch to let other third-party applications be developed. But let's get started. Let's see how this watch stands up to activity. Let's give it a um, good test to see if it's accurate or not. All right, let's go. Okay, here, you're going to see I'm testing the watch in kind of in rest mode. I want to see what the measurements are without any activity, without any movement. Um, you'll notice that the problem here with the Apple Watch is that you have to set it up and start the reading of your heartbeat versus the G-Shock watch, which is constantly reading um, your heartbeat and is giving you information readily available. Now, here you see that both watches are pretty accurate. They're both reading about 60 beats per minute, and it's pretty much um, in line with both watches. Pretty neat. And just to reiterate, you'll notice here that the Apple Watch refreshes its heartbeat every 10 seconds. So um, compare that to the uh, G-Shock watch, which refreshes continuously and gives you more accurate real-time reading of your heartbeat. I'm happy to see that both watches are pretty much um, the same in terms of heartbeat, so that's pretty good. Here you'll see that the Apple Watch um, times out and you lose heart information or your heartbeat. So you have to go open up the application, reset it, um, and you'll see that it'll take some time for the reading to start over again. So this is where the Casio G-Shock stands out. Once it starts up though, you'll see that the reading is once again very close to that of the G-Shock. Good job. Now let's see how the watches do when you start getting a little bit active. You'll see now that the watch shows us about 61 beats per minute on my uh, G-Shock watch and about the same 61 beats per minute on the Apple watch. Now let's get the heart racing, let's do some push-ups and see how it records. All right, let's see how we do with these push-ups here. I did about a thousand, okay, maybe like 40, but I wanted to see how the watch is compared in reading my heartbeat once I started getting that heart rate up. Two thousand, two thousand and one. All right, <laughs> let's see how they measure up. All right, the G-Shock watch is showing me about 95 beats per minute and the uh, Apple watch is starting to read. Let's wait for it. Let's wait for it. 97 on the G-Shock, 112 on the Apple watch. Now, why is it such a difference? Um, perhaps it could be the way the Apple watch or the G-Shock watch was on my wrist. Now, when I remove it, I move it closer to my wrist, you'll see that the actual readings get much closer to each other. On the G-Shock watch, it's currently reading 100, and on the Apple Watch, it's now reading about 102. So, a little bit of variance there, but not too much to be showing um, that it's one incorrect or the other one is not incorrect. All right, YouTube, I'm still out of breath. But there you have it. The heart rate monitor, I noticed that um, in some cases, it was very close to the Apple Watch. 
In some other cases, it's kind of um, fluctuated. I'm not sure if it was because of the wrist placement on the watch on the wrist or maybe other factors. But for the most part, I was very content with the accuracy in terms of comparing that with the Apple Watch. There you guys have it. Hopefully you enjoyed that review. I know Casio posted some videos, so I'll post the video of that now. In terms of the heart rate monitor but i thought i'd give you some real life um notifications give you some real life showing or examples of how the heart monitor or the heart sensor operates thanks again guys the next video coming up will be about notifications i know a lot of you guys have been asking me how the notifications work i'll touch on all the notification options how to how those work and Thank you for watching. Please subscribe. Please, please, please hit that like button if this video was very helpful to you with any kind of help or it was entertaining for the most part to see me bounce up and down doing those push-ups. Woof, I'm tired. Till next time, this is Chicago. Holla at you, boy. I'm out of here, guys. Love you all. Peace. I'm rocking my G-Shock. 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 I'm rocking my G-Shock